Newport, Alabama. First, I want to apologize for our tardiness. It was a little technical difficulty, but God has reasons for all things, and we know that there's a reason behind why we're a little late. Maybe it's just because that you weren't quite ready, and, and he was allowed you to get ready to uh, tune us in if you're at home viewing. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done in our lives. We thank you for keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. Father, those that we saw and those that we didn't see, we thank you for the provision, provisions that you've made for us throughout this day, not only us, but our family and our church families. Lord, we pray for those who we don't even know that were in need, but Father, some way their needs were met. And Father, we know that they were met because you made the provision. You are the source of all our strength, Lord. You you are the one that that sees all that we don't see, and you do all that we can't do. And we just thank you for it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Tonight we are going to begin where we left off last week on journeying into overcoming, and we were talking about rising above life's toughest problems. And in our lesson, we are going to be talking about attacking your anger. But tonight, we will talk about the causes of anger. Now, I pray that you had a good day, because this is the day that the Lord made, and all he made was and is good and very good. So let us be glad and rejoice in it. The cause of anger. Anger is like one of the red lights on the dashboard of our cars. It is a warning signal that something is wrong. In Christian's life, there are warnings that something is wrong. We always get a feeling that something's not right, and many times we can't figure out what it is until something happens. And then we say, oh, that's what's been troubling me. I didn't know what it was, but, you know, that's really what it was. So that was a red light that was on in our life. Therefore, to control our anger, we must always ask ourselves, what has caused me to get angry? Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's a thing. Sometimes people get mad if it rains too much. They get mad if the sun is too hot, if the, the temperature gets over 90 degrees, they are complaining, they get angry. Some even curse God because the weather is not like they think it should be. But we must always ask ourselves, what is the cause of my anger? Now God does not make us angry. What he does is he chastises us for our wrongdoing. And that is a good thing. What if he didn't chastise us and he just cut our oxygen supply off? Or he stopped our heart from beating? Or he let us have a brain stroke and we are paralyzed for the rest of our lives? And sometimes uh, if we have problems in our lives, most of the time we have something to do with. So there's no way you can always blame something or somebody else for what's happening with you. Tonight we're going to talk about the three basic causes of anger. Uh, I'm reminded of a story I heard about a person that was driving a vehicle and he had someone in the vehicle with him. and. Uh, light had changed from red to yellow to green. And he was still sitting there for some seconds. And the person in the car with him 
asked her, why are you sitting here? Because the light has changed. He said, well, my brother may be coming from the other direction and says he pays no attention to <laughs> caution lights and red lights when they first change. So if he's coming, he'll hit me. So I'm going to wait and give him time to get back. So sometimes it's not good to always jump when it's time to go. You know, we have some people that probably will run over you if you got in their way when they're going out of church because they're just in that big hurry. They want to get out so they don't have to talk with anyone. But hurt causes us to get angry. If you got a hammer in your hand and you are nailing and you miss that nail and you hit your thumb, what do you normally say? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. No. Or you might say, oh, so-and-so that hurt. You know, a strong agent. Something that you wouldn't say in church. Sometimes people even throw the hammer. They are so angry. Do a little angry dance. Uh, if the blood is coming out of the finger, they'll put the finger in their mouth and split, split the blood out. Because they, they're angry. They'll say a few choice words like I say, that shouldn't be said anywhere, let alone in the church. Some of us have been hit on our hearts by words that other people spoke or the action that other people has taken. At church, some have let anger get to them and they have left the church and they have not returned since they got angry. Sometimes the cause for anger is because you are not willing to accept correction. There are some people who think there's nobody right but them, and you can't tell them anything. The second cause for anger, anger is insecurity. People who are insecure get mad. A good self-image is essential to attacking our anger. You should feel good about yourself if nobody else does. I've, I've heard uh, some people say that, you know, just the sight of other people make them mad, said, I, I just can't stand them, I don't want to be around them, but if you feel that way about other people, the Bible says the same measure that you measure out to other people will be measured back to you. So you should have a better self-image of yourself. Being easily angered by what people say is a sure sign of insecurity in your life. Some people take everything that's said to heart. If they're broke and somebody says something about money, man, they, they get upset, you know, because they don't have money. But I found out that when you got friends, sometimes friends are better than money. I've had people that, that when I was in restaurants eating and a waitress would come to me with the ticket and say, your meal is already paid for. You know, and I'm wondering who paid for it. I look around and I don't really see anybody that I know. But there's somebody in there that knows me. And then before I leave, they'll say, well, how have you been doing, Pastor Henry? I said, I'm well, thank you. And I don't know if they're the person that paid for the meal or not. All I know is that people who are easily angered by what people say are a problem. That's why we have what 
is commanded in Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter and the 21st verse. It say, also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thy heart be servant curse thee. See, many people speak without thinking. Just whatever comes up, comes out. Uh, but God made us with two ears. So that means that we should listen twice as much as we speak. If we did that, then the world would be in better shape. The church would really be a beacon on the hill. But most of us church people, we lay our religion down. That's what we say. I'm going to lay my religion down, and I'm going to tell them a piece of my mind. But sometimes your mind is not to be revealed to other folks because your mind does not speak. But your mind is your thought pattern. And if you have a good thought pattern, then you're going to speak kind words. We shouldn't depend on the opinion of others for our self-esteem. You should know that God is the source of our being. God put smiles on our face because of what he has put in our heart. He put smiles on our faces because smiles take less muscle than frowns. So if we think about that, we could conserve some energy in our body and learn to smile more than we frown. There will be times in life when people say critical things about you. Uh, instead of encouraging you, they'll say things that will discourage you. There are people who will speak negative about your actions because what you are doing, perhaps for somebody else, they don't want it done. So they'll talk negative to you about what you're doing and tell you why you shouldn't do it. Hurtful things about us, they, they don't mind, you know, hurting your feelings. And sometimes they be waiting for opportunities to hurt your feelings. They say, well, I knew, I knew they, they, they'd come around one day and I'd get a chance to tell them all. So this is a good time today. So uh, the more insecure we are, the angrier we will be about these kinds of remarks. So you should feel secure in doing the right things. And that way it does not matter what anybody say. As long as you know you're doing what pleased God and you can be faithful without being successful. You don't have to have a number of followings behind you. You just need to be faithful. Some people think it's in how many viewers they have when they do a Bible study or do a sermon or have a service. They, they want to go back and see how many viewers there were. But it does not matter how many viewers that you have. Because remember, when Jesus was training his disciples, he had three mostly that he depended upon. But he had 12 followers. So that lets you know that you're not going to have everybody on your side and everybody behind you when you set out to do good. The third reason or the cause for anger is frustration. When people get frustrated, they will get angry. Failing to accomplish an objective can frustrate people to the point of anger. See, that's because there are some positions that some people are in that they shouldn't be in. And they get frustrated 
because they cannot perform effectively like they know they should. So just because you are in a position does not mean that you are the person that should be there. And a good example is a good businessman will not make a good president of the United States. But you need a man who has been politically trained, one who has studied people, one who has been abroad and knows about other nations, and what to expect when you go and visit a foreign country. But we know that sometimes some people want, they just want the position, whether they can fulfill it or not. So frustration is basically a lack of patience and knowledge. You don't have the patience to learn, and you have a lack of knowledge. What does Proverbs 14, 29 tell us about a lack of patience? He says, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. People that don't get mad every time you say something to them, or every time you, you may uh, bring up something that would be helpful to them in their ministry that they're not doing, they don't get upset. But they listen to what you have to say. So they have a great understanding. But he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. That's what Proverbs say. There are some who are expecting to start something that they've heard. It does not matter whether it's no knowledge, whether it's true, just put it in their ear and they are ready to get the wrong spirit and start something for somebody else. I've heard some people say that a deacon should just disagree Sometimes, just to let folks know that, you know, you got some power. You don't have to agree. But that's not the position of a deacon. That's not how a deacon should be. That's, even, that's not even the way a Christian should be. You can be disagreeable and still agree to go on in the way of the Lord. Some people disagree with things when they know they are right. Because they say, well, everybody don't need to agree. Somebody need to look at it from another side. Well, if it's right, what is the other side to look at? Well, that person is not a good Christian, they certainly would not make a good deacon. This means that we should cultivate understanding. We should try to understand people's and situations. Now there are some things that look alike, but the situation is different. There are some people who have gone through the same things, but the situation was different. So we need to try to understand people. All people don't respond to certain things in life like others. Because some are more advanced in the study of God's word. Some are, have grown more in their faith. Because the Bible says God gives all of us a measure of faith, but he did not say that he gave all of us the same amount of faith. So faith has a lot to do with how we respond to people and situation. If we read the instructions before starting a project rather than getting frustrated and angry, all of us who are parents, we know about at Christmas time when 
Your children get those toys that have to be assembled. How that we open that box and we start assembling those toys. And then after we think we have assembled it, we look and we see all these parts that we had left over. <laughs> then we go back and we pick up the instructions and we start reading and we see what we skipped putting this part in this place. Or we left off this part in that place because we did not read the instruction. Even with home tools, we fall and we fail. Then we again pick up the instructions. We may have hurt ourselves with the tool because we didn't have it assembled correctly. Because there are safety features on most powered tools. So there is in every life. These three causes of, of anger are hurt, insecurity, and frustration. Having looked at the categories and the causes of anger, it's now time for us to consider something else. And I'm sure I won't have time to finish this, but then next week, if God blesses us, we'll come back and we'll finish what we have left off. I'm going to attempt to speak a little bit on the cure for anger. To attack our anger, we must first understand that anger is a choice. Anger does not just fall up on people, but people choose to get angry. Now, there are some people that you cannot make man. And don't think that just because a person laughs at you that they are making fun and you get angry. Because there are some people like myself. I will laugh at myself, so surely you know I'm going to laugh at you. So you have to know me so you know not to get angry when you see me laughing when something has happened with you or why you were doing something. Have you ever been in a heated argument with your wife or your husband? I mean heated. I'm not talking about just disagreeing, but I'm talking about heating, heated to the point where you would like to lock the jaws on the other person so they couldn't speak. Or you'd like to just get away from them then you are using a loud, agitated voice when you really get angry at your spouse. Many times we get that way with our children. Not only do we get agitated and speak loud, but we call them names that a human being is not. You look just like this. Are you acting like this? Uh, normally some kind of animal that you call a human being. And God specifically made a difference between human beings and animals. So we should never speak like that. And have you noticed that if a car drives up when you're in a heated argument, that you stop arguing? because you got company. But if it was really, 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 really angry, you would keep arguing and you'd be fighting. When you open the door to let them in, you'd be saying words that you have no business saying, but what you do is you start smiling. When you go, oh, come on in. We, we were just in here talking. Come on, have a seat and, and, and make yourself comfortable. What can we get for you? And, and all of that heated, argument is dismissed because somebody showed up. That's a good thing, isn't it? If the telephone rings, somebody will stop and answer the phone, and when they answer the phone, it's in a sweet, nice tone of a voice that the person on the other end did not know 
that you was fussing and arguing with your spouse because you are now calm, your voice is sweet, you're probably even smiling even though the person on the other end can't see you, but now they can FaceTime you and they'll know whether you're smiling or whether you're angry. And they say, why are you looking like you're looking, you know, if they FaceTime you. But we always change that argument to a hello. So then that means that we can control our anger if we do three things. But I'm going to stop with one tonight. If we constrain our words, most of the time we express our anger by what we say, not so much by what we do. Because when you start passing licks, nobody's just not going to stand there and just let you keep beating them. You're going to get a fight started. Proverbs 12 and 18 gives us a principle here. It said, There is that speaketh like the piercing of a word, but the tongue of the wise is hell. There are some people that speak like words that pierce through your heart, pierce your soul. I mean, it's just, oh, it just hurts just to hear some people say some things about you or to have heard that they said something about you. It is piercing, but it's only words. Have you heard people say, uh, uh, talk don't bother me? Talk does bother you. If you don't believe it, you let people start scandalizing your name. You'll find out that words does matter. And it does matter what people think about you. Think about how many people have lost their spouses because of lies that other people told. Think about how many people have lost their jobs because of lies that were told to your supervisor that he believed the lies instead of the true facts that were taking place. So don't let anybody tell you that words does not matter. But it say the tongue of the wise is hell. Everybody want good health, don't you? So if you want good health, you should want to give somebody else good health. I'm reminded right now of the song that B.B. and C.C. Wyman sang, that laughter is good, just like a medicine. You know, if you can laugh, you can get rid of your troubles. If you can laugh, you won't be hurt over friends that turn their back on you. If you can laugh, you will not be mad if the people at the church turn you off as pastor. You can laugh and say, well, I did what God told me to do. And he said, shake the dust off my feet and go on. You shouldn't have to wait for a policeman to come pull you out of the church because the people don't want you. You must not be pierced by what people say, but you should be wise enough to not get in arguments with people that and the Bible says this, that you should not argue with the food. Because that's all that some people want. They've never lost an argument. They don't intend to lose an argument. And you may as well just go on on your way. Now I'm going to leave you uh, with this thought. Someone has said that the quickest way to cut your own throat is with a sharp tongue. Reckless words can hurt worse than physical blows. 
some people say, well, I've been waiting for my chance, and I got my chance today. But remember, the quickest way to cut your own throat is with a sharp tongue. So the ditch that you dig for me, you better dig another one, because it might be for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the study of your word tonight. We pray that someone has been enlightened, encouraged, and has been helped. Because, Father, we all need help. We are all overcomers. And, Father, we pray that whatever obstacle is in our life, and we know that if we'll study your word, and if we'll give our life to you and we'll delight ourselves in you, that you will give us the solution that we can solve our problems and we can be a better witness for thee down here on earth to help build your kingdom in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.